glad to be back with you. Today I've got a matrix problem, and more specifically I'd like to talk about singular matrix matrices, what a singular matrix is, and how do you tell when you've got one. And I'm going to work with this problem right here. I worked with this in uh, class the other day. I wrote this up on the board just off the top of my head and thought, well, that looks like it ought to be invertible. It looks like it ought to be non-singular, and of course it wasn't. I, I uh, had to backtrack a little bit, so I thought that would make a pretty good video. Just to make sure we know what matrix form is, this is a matrix and this is a vector. All right, and we would write this down. This is a, a system of linear equations, and we would write it down in matrix notation in this form, okay, where A is this matrix, B is this vector. Remember, a vector is just a matrix that only has one column in it. And I've got a vector of unknowns. If I wanted to write this out in actually its original algebraic format, it would look like x plus 2y plus z equals 1, x plus 2y plus 2z equals 2, and x plus 2y plus 3z equals 3. Okay, So that, there it is in algebraic form and there it is in matrix form. Now matrix algebra is a whole, ser a whole field of mathematics. For our purposes right now, we're really going to treat it really as just a, a, a notational form that makes linear problems simple to work with. And re remember, by linear I mean x, y, and z, my unknown variables, they're not multiplied by each other, so there's no x, x, or x, y, or x, z term in there anywhere. And they're also not raised to any power. So what that means geometrically is if I were to plot any of those three out in three space, what I get is straight lines. Each one of those is a straight line in space. So when I say I'm trying to solve this system of equations, what I'm really trying to do is I'm going to try to find values of x and y and z that make all three of these equations true. And geometrically speaking, what that means is I'm trying to find a point in three space where all three of those lines cross. Now, what if one of these equations was really just a combination of the other two? Geometrically, what that would mean is that at least two of those lines are parallel to each other and there is no place in three space where they cross. That's the problem. Okay. So I'm going to erase this for right now, give myself some room. Okay, what I would do here, actually I probably should have written that back up. If I have A x equals B, right? If those were just numbers, the way I would solve this, instead of matrices, if those were just numbers, I'd divide by A and I'd say x equals B over A. Well, that's pretty much what you do in matrix form. x equals, now for I don't know, terminal, terminological reasons, I guess. You don't actually write B over A, you write the inverse of A times B. That seems to be the, the syntax we're happy with. And what you'll do then is you'll find a whole uh, list of unknown variables well, that are now known. And then this x vector consists of x and y and z. Right? Well, the problem right now is I can't divide by every matrix. It turns out I can't divide by this one. But that's just like you can't divide by every number. I can't divide by zero. That's undefined, right? That's, Ill, that's not allowed. Well, not all matrices uh, can be inverted as well either. That's, that's called an inversion. And there's three ways I know of to determine this. Maybe there's some more. But just like I can't divide by a zero, I can't divide by a matrix or I can't invert a matrix whose determinant is zero. So, if we want to find out if a matrix is singular, okay, and singular means it can't be inverted. Sometimes it's called non-invertible or sometimes it's called singular, but those mean the same thing. One is the determinant equal to zero, okay? Now, determinant is a property of matrices. It's a, you can take a square matrix, any square matrix, and you can calculate its determinant. It's a, a series of calculations that you go through, and you get some number. Well, that number can tell you lots of interesting things about your matrix, but one of the things it can tell you is whether the determinant is zero or not. Now, I'm, I've been trying to figure, to find a good geometric or just uh, definition words of what a matri uh, determinant is, and there's not a lot of good ones out there. The closest I came was Imagine the, the columns of this matrix being vectors. Okay? You can think of them that way if you wish. 
the parallelopiped, which is kind of like a rhombus in n dimensions, defined by those uh, three vectors, would have some volume. If that volume was zero, then the determinant was, would be zero. So it isn't exactly correct to think of this as the absolute value of the matrix, but it's at least analogous. So just like you can't divide by zero, you can't divide by a uh, matrix whose determinant is zero, and it's akin to being an absolute value. Certainly not the same thing. Next thing you can do is, is the rank equal to n, okay, where n is the number of rows and the number of columns. Okay, so if rank tells you the number of unique equations you've got here. Since this one I know is singular, and I know it turns out there's only two unique equations, the third one is a combination of the other two, the rank of this matrix is 2, even though n is 3, so that's not going to work. But if the rank equals n, then that means the determinant is not equal to 0, and you're good to go. And the third one, this is oftentimes how we find it out, is by row operations. You try to solve this problem using row operations, and you wind up with a row of zeros. And that's what I did. I wound up with this third row being all zeros. Okay? So those are the three possibilities. So what I found out, and let's see here, let's, I'll just use this for right now. I found out that the, the, the determinant of my matrix was zero. So already I know it isn't going to work, but just to go through the motions here, I looked at the rank, and the rank of A was two, darn. And finally, I got a row of zeros. Alright, so I'm just absolutely out of luck here. That didn't work at all. Now just to show you how this worked out, let me uh, erase some of this stuff here and I'll show you how it worked out when I did the row operations. When you do row operations, you're basically adding and subtracting rows from each other, multiplying rows by uh, constants, things like that. I think I have another video on that. And I, you, you typically will do this in what's called augmented form. There's A right there and there's B right there. We've got a little line between them. Um, showing how that works out. So I did some row operations. I won't try to duplicate them all here because it's kind of boring to watch. You can do it if you want. And what I got with is 1, 2, 1, 1. Let's see, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 0, 0, 0. Dang. All right, so already, that, you know, that isn't going to work. I already knew it wasn't going to work, but just went through here and figured it out and I got a row of zeros. So what that means is I don't have three independent equations. I've only got two. That's why that row of zeros showed up. Now, I can make a change if I want, change the problem, and turn my non-invertible matrix, my singular matrix, into an invertible matrix, a non-singular matrix. And the way I did that was I changed that coefficient right there, the one in the bottom left, and I turned that into a 2. Okay. Now, clearly, I've changed the problem now. If that first problem had physical significance, I just changed that. But for the sake of an example in class, I could change it without getting into too much trouble. And what I came up with was, this is my new A. Okay, how about, I'll call that A star. Well, the uh, determinant of A star was no longer zero, and the rank was three. So, that's good. Now I know I can invert it. And just in case you want to know here, um, my vector, my solution vector, looked like this, and it was 0, 0, 1. Okay? Maybe not a very interesting answer, but it's an answer. I was able to invert this now. Alrighty? So there you go. This is how to, how to uh, figure out whether you've got a singular matrix, what a singular matrix means, and what it looks like when you make a modification to make your matrix non-singular. Hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.